And first up, we've got uh, Mark Goldstein, who's the chairman of BackOps. Glad to have you here, Mark. Um, who'll be talking about reinventing loyalty with gamification. Great. Thanks, Toby. Let's see. Um, I want to talk about uh, a little more about gamification, loyalty. To me, it's a big same thing. And uh, so I'm talk a little bit of background on me, 18 minutes, give you some of the ideas of what I'm thinking about uh, and some of the projects I've had a privilege to work on. Um, I founded a company called Loyalty Lab, sold it to TIPCO two years ago. It's part of Loyalty Lab. Um, we launched over 100 different loyalty programs. Loyalty Lab's clients include Target and Kohl's and Virgin and Nike and uh, Whole Foods and you name it. Um, we are their loyalty platform. Uh, since I sold Loyalty Lab, I went to uh, do a lot of uh, advising and consulting. I've been helping Badgeville and Keep and a firm called Nomi, and I'll talk about some of these guys. Um, and right now I'm running a company called BackOps, and what we're BackOps is it's a uh, back office as a service. So if you have a small business and you're thinking about finance and accounting, just come to us, we'll do it. Um, here's the big sort of, this is the big dummy in the room. The big dummy in the room says most of the stuff we do in loyalty and in gamification actually doesn't work. Now it doesn't mean we can't pivot and make it work, but understand that it's okay to fail. You're expected to fail. 80% of things do fail. But you, you know, what's our job? Our job is to make it work. And so that's really what I'm going to do for the next 15 minutes, saying here's some of the stuff I thought that worked or is working and hopefully get some ideas going. Um, one thing that's really different about today versus you know, sort of in the old days, I'm a old loyalty dog, um, is a lot of the stuff that was hard is now easy. And a lot of the stuff that is easy is hard. It used to be really hard to get anyone to sign up to your program. Really, really hard because we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have Twitter. We didn't have really a, a good internet. We had no mobile. So getting pe all the money was spent in sign up. And then it was also integrating, you know, integrating to your stores, integrating to your website, integrating to basically your you know, mobile, mobile integration was really hard. All that is becoming a lot easier. But at the same time, some things that were easy are now hard. The beauty of the, you know, making it sort of, it was hard to get someone to join, but there were a few lo fewer loyalty programs. The problem what happens today is there's no patience. There's so many choices, so many options. And so that, yes, you can get somebody to join, but what good is it? Because the half-life is probably a fraction of what it used to be. Um, I think of today what's going on in the loyalty world is a, somewhat of a cold war. And when I talk about that, it's the you know, job of any new brand is to sort of rise above or figure out how do you compete in this cold war. And I think the, the only way to play is really to play. And the only way to win is to play guerrilla warfare. And what I'm really talking about here is the fact that you have big, great companies in every space, in retail, in hospitality, gaming, in airline, that are very dominant, increasingly dominant players, oligopolies or monopolies. And so our job as another type of brand is, how do you compete against these really, really good loyalty programs that really, really work, but probably somewhat conventional? So not these conventional things, um, but you've got to rise above. And this is where gamification kicks in. Um, I think that loyalty is the biggest gamification niche. You know, when I think about what you can do in gamification, to me, selling stuff, and that's loyalty, is really number one. And uh, we were always measured, and we continue to be measured by our success at Loyalty Lab based on how much more stuff did we sell today? How type of lift is your program getting? Don't lose sight of that because that's what all of this is about. And you've got, you know, so you think about gamification and loyalty, they're all munched together. Gamification is the new loyalty. And you've got billion dollar loyalty programs that are basically driving key revenue across all the key sectors worldwide. And so I think that's, that's just how I think about this stuff, which is what can I sell today? And how can we sell more you know, in, using, in, with a great loyalty program? So here are the things that I really love and think that are really sort of seemingly have worked and you know, sort of very topically today. I think that today, if you're going to rise above, some of the things you absolutely need to do is you've got to basically think, obviously, social, but you have to think about collecting friends to accomplish shared goals. I think that's really important, is then that's sort of embracing social and getting everyone sort of together and involved in things. Um, creating incentives to get people to visit whatever you're trying to get them to visit every Friday. And when I say Friday, it doesn't have to be Friday. Remember uh, Prince Spaghetti, which was, you know, Wednesday is Prince Spaghetti Day? Well, that, why was it Wednesday? Because that's when no one ate spaghetti. So whatever you're trying to really do, just 
focus probably on your sort of low traffic day and use your loyalty program to drive traffic on those days. The same way the airlines get, you know, focus on, you know, you can get those 25,000 uh, mile flights on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but not uh, Friday night. Uh, using diminishing rewards to drive urgency, basically make sure that clock is ticking. Make sure it's ticking down. Get people motivated to do what you want them to do. And, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, boom, or nothing. Um, mass goals where everyone wins or loses. Again, getting everyone together and getting people to sort of pool their currency, pool their rewards, pool, their, pool, pool whatever they're earning together. Um, it, again, it just gets a lot more excitement and virality going. Leaderboards, well obviously we're at the, you know, we're at leaderboard ground zero here. Um, but it's leaderboards that commit communities, any type of community against each other. It could be schools, teams, bars, whatever it is. You got to do this stuff. You know, this is from our, our old slide at Loyalty Lab. Probably 10 years we had a similar type of slide, and I call it the nudge. And if, it's hard to read, but you know, what you've got here is you always, any program's the same. You've got somebody out there who invites some of her friends in the group to sign up, who basically at some overtime might be doing something, might be visiting a store, might be buying something. They basically get badged or rewarded. They visit or they buy or they, they refer more people. They get more rewards. Time goes on. You've got to nudge them to do more things. And at the end of the day, hopefully they win a prize or reward or do something where they fall off. So every program is really all about that. And, but today there are a few great things that I wanted to talk about. And I think you know, a lot of people know a number of these things. I've always been a huge fan of what Shopkick and what Cyril and the team have done down at Shopkick, which is basically kicking people into stores with a sort of coalition loyalty, lap, loyalty app. It's got amazing gamification. And if you're a brand and you have any type of physical presence, you've got to do your own Shopkick. So you can go out to these new companies called Euclid, another company called Nomi, and you can add location, basically location-based intelligence to whatever program you have today. I don't think if you have anything physical that you can launch a program today and not do this. Because a key part of, of a program is getting people, is pushing people into your physical point of presence to get them to buy things. And Euclid and Nomi are both great companies that will license you the technology so you can build your own personal shopkick. You've got to do that. What else has been great? Recycle Bank has is is always been awesome. I, when, I, when I knew these guys from uh, Points.com, they said, oh, we're going to start a, you know, a, a loyalty program to get people to recycle more. I laughed. I said, good luck. Um, but thankfully, it actually made a difference. And I actually got, worked with Waste Management to build their own version of this program. And when you think of using, basically, gamification and loyalty to get people to do good things, um, obviously, that basically is on trend. And it's an important thing to consider. Um, Badgerill, I'm involved with Badgerill, and Badgerill's sort of premier client, I think, is Samsung. And what they're doing with Samsung is, is actually really important. I had, earlier on, I had worked with Dell and tried to do the same thing, but these are different times, and it's so much easier to have to launch and build successful programs today than it was. So with Samsung, the idea here is getting basically advocates. And it's just building advocacy and getting people to refer, to buy, and to append, and to blog, and to basically post, and to do anything and to have these leaderboards pop up on Samsung.com that gets people active and, and talking more about the brand. It's really working. This is an example of basically a bad villain, what Bunch, Bunchball and, and all the and other vendors in there can do for you. Um, you know, another count is I love this new company called Mango Health. Mango Health, behind the scene, has basically built a gamification loyalty program around a database of food types and medicines that can't be mixed. And the whole idea here is someone could go to WebMD and find out, oh, what I shouldn't be eating, what I should be eating, how to, how to stay healthy. But actually, Mango Health has made it fun. And it's a really, really fun app that you can cart around with you. And so to make sure if you have any, you know, if you're allergic to certain things, Mango Health will make it fun to find those things. So I encourage you to take a look at that. I really like what these guys are doing. I love what these guys are doing. And anyone if, um, who's based, how many people out there are, are members of Strava? Three. I would have figured 100. Strava, well, in San Francisco, it's just weird. Uh, I mean, Strava is, in the you know, downside, it's actually killing people. On the upside is that basically it's taking cyclists and runners and basically pitting them all together um, to compete and to earn badges and rewards and to be king of the whatever. And behind the scenes, Strava is starting to basically get into commerce and is building a basically a really, really powerful gamification loyalty program around um, athletic in, uh, pursuits. And so if you haven't seen Strava, it's really rich, it's really, um, it's an incredibly viral and really instead of intensely used locally. Doesn't mean all these 
you know, great ideas have to come from entrepreneurial or you know, venture-backed companies. I think what Walgreen has done with their Healthy Rewards program, and that's a new loyalty program launch just in the last year, year and a half, is really impressive. Walgreens didn't have a loyalty program. They had nothing in gamification. They just had nothing there. And what they've done is they've come out and they've based, they built their whole branded Walgreen Healthy Rewards that encourages people to eat, encourage people to take their drugs, med, their meds, encourages people to basically behave and act properly and to exercise and rewards them accordingly or rewards them with discounts and offers. And it takes us pieces of what we love about Recycle Bag and basically but brands it in their own brand. And I think that the, the past might have been, you know, more around coalition programs like Shopkip or maybe, or, or and others. But today, and I know a number of you are here also, it's about building these types of programs for the leading brands in America. Because the leading brands in America can very easily get traffic to their sites, to their loyalty programs, to their gamification efforts, and make it work over the long haul. Um, just sort of shifting gears, and I'm, again, I come back to selling stuff. Because that's how I got renewals. If I didn't basically point to my program and said, it, this, this project that we worked on so will help you sell more things, I didn't get my renewal. And so I think one of the biggest things I learned is that you need to introduce a loyalty program where the advertised, how it works, is really built um, around a game, but isn't a game. That, no, excuse me, excuse me, don't. Don't build it around a game. There's one exception out there, and that's McDonald's, that basically has mon monopoly. If you want to build a great gamification loyalty program and have it last as a program and not just be a campaign, you have to build it around a simple loyalty idea where you, you get $5 when you spend $100, and you hypercharge the accrual and the user experiences by introducing these serendipitous offers and campaigns that are aligned to game mechanics over time. Meaning, don't just build a game, don't just think around a campaign. If you want to build a program that has lasting value, you have to think about the brand and make sure that the, the loyalty program itself is simple and it can last a number of years and have a really strong uh, half-life. Um, today it's about loyal, uh, you know, I call it loyalification. I mean, you know, gamification, thanks to the Red Hot Chili Poppers. It's loyalty, gamification, one and the same. Traditional loyalty is increasingly dead unless you are a very, very established brand and already have a program. Almost every brand already has a program. You think of every airline, they're done. Every retailer, they're pretty much done. So traditional loyalty is dead. I say, and I think play is alive. And you've got to do whatever it takes to get the attention of your member that gets them to sort of get to their next best offer, their next best activity, or their next best purchase. So everything you design in your program has to think about next best, next best. It doesn't mean you're getting them to buy. You have to get them to buy something today or tomorrow. It might get them to do something, to engage somebody or something. But get them to whatever is next best and have in a, data, a smart database that is ensuring that you know what next best is. So when that offer, that opportunity in your gamification system is, is kicking in, it drives people to next best. To me, you know, loyalty, game mechanics, gamification, it's all a, it's a, it's a mush. Um, it's the traditional loyalty is over. That's my summary. New loyalty is definitely about these gamification features that we're all seeing here. Um, if you're launching a new program, you have to be gamification first, loyalty second. Um, and it's, you know, it's a great, you know, it's really a, a great day for brands because what they can do and what, you know, vendors out here can help you do. And so that should be my... My 18 minutes, you know, my set of speed talk. Thank you very much.